Pakistan is one of the 52 countries facing a severe debt crisis, and the repayment and servicing of external debt are amongst the most severe issues faced by the country. According to various financial experts, Pakistan is crippled by a host of challenges as the nation of 220 million people is at the most challenging economic juncture. Pakistan's fiscal and balance of payments deficits have shocked the nation and all the populist policies turned into a fiasco. The foreign reserves of Pakistan have come down from $22 billion to a mere $8.57 billion which is alarmingly low. Altogether, Pakistan has external debt and liabilities worth over $90 billion. Mysteriously, every other day, the Pakistani rupee is losing its value against the dollar at a startling rate. On the other hand, Pakistan imports, food, and energy in huge quantities. More imports and less export don't let the foreign currency remain in the stock. This decline in foreign exchange reserves is resulting in high inflation. Notably, Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif's government has increased the petrol and diesel prices, by around 80 rupees per liter at the behest of the IMF. This increase has caused a surge in the cost of production as well as the prices of every item being sold to the consumers. Whether or not Pakistan defaults, is contingent on the government successfully renewing the stalled, extended fund facility program agreed with the IMF. Access to international credit markets, Funding from international multilateral agencies such as the World Bank and Asian Development Bank, and bilateral financing arrangements are all tied to this. Unfortunately, the discussions with the fund to conclude a staff-level agreement suffered a setback following the submission of the FY 2022-2023 federal budget to the National Assembly on June 10. The uncertainty that has followed in its wake about the revival of the extended fund facility program has thrown the markets into a tailspin. After the budget reveals, KSE 100 has nosedived over 1,000 points which are over 2%, and the exchange rate has fallen by over 6 Pakistani rupees against US dollar. There are unconfirmed reports of international banks requiring 100% margin provision against letters of credit. There is an increasing sense of foreboding that SLA may not materialize, and the default event horizon gets ever closer. As defined by the credit rating agency's standard and pause, a country will default if it breaks a contract on a debt obligation or tenders an exchange offer of new debt with less favorable terms than the original issue. Should this happen, the ramifications for Pakistan will be devastating as can be witnessed from the nightmarish chaos unleashed in Sri Lanka. Insolvency will cascade into the impoverishment of large parts of the domestic economy with accompanying destructive social dislocation. The government and its institutions will suffer an immediate loss of legitimacy among Pakistanis and international lenders. The financial sector will first bear the brunt of the adverse consequences there is likely to be a steep devaluation of the Pakistan rupee and a stock market crash. Should depositors fear for the safety and value of their foreign exchange savings, there could even be a run on such accounts, as well as on Roshan digital accounts held by overseas Pakistanis. With confidence in the overall financial system faltering, it would not be inconceivable to witness some domestic banks face a liquidity crunch. Even if that is avoided, the imposition of capital controls would be inevitable to prevent a stampede of conversion of Pakistani rupees into other hard currencies. The impact of default is likely to ripple throughout the wider economy. Exporters and importers would no longer be able to obtain trade credit, causing shortages of crucial consumables and industrial inputs. As households experience increased unemployment, the level of overall consumption will fall, and therefore aggregate demand contracts. This in turn would mean even more workers will lose jobs, which will only exacerbate the demand contraction. It is far from certain that following a default, the state will be able to renegotiate the terms of the outstanding loans to enable it to revive access to international credit facilities, and work towards transforming the country's economy in the long run without the burden of crippling debt. The risks associated with default should be unacceptable for policymakers to ever allow it to happen. 
the government should be alert to the possibility that it will face much greater public outrage as a consequence of default than if it were to implement the additional measures that the fund has requested for reviving the extended fund facility program. This includes fully eliminating all subsidies on petrol and diesel sales by further hiking their prices. The government is also expected to implement power tariff hikes to the tune of 7.91 rupees per unit as well as make fuel adjustments on a quarterly basis. The fund is reported to be unconvinced by the personal income tax proposals in the budget and has indicated that it would like an additional 125 billion rupees revenue generation rather than the provision of 47 billion rupees tax relief in the budget. Finally, the fund may also want more visibility on when the budgeted petroleum levy figure of 750 billion rupees will be collected. Time is running out to take corrective actions and restore credibility with the IMF to conclude a staff level agreement. Failing to do so could mean the country goes beyond the point of no return and defaults. Such an outcome must be avoided at all costs.